So there's the story that I always tell them that gets me in trouble. It's the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that husbands try to use against their wives, where he mentions Ibrahim ﷺ visiting Ismail ﷺ. After Ismail has grown up, he's married. Ibrahim comes to the house of Ismail and Ismail is not home. His wife answers. His wife does not know that this is her father-in-law and her father-in-law does not tell her that he is her father-in-law. But she serves this noble looking old man and Ibrahim ﷺ says, how is your situation? Tell me about your situation. And all she does is talk about how horrible everything is. You know, it's terrible. We're living in hardship, poverty, you know, just complaints. And Ibrahim salam says to her that when your husband comes home, give my salam to him and tell him that he should change the door to his gate. <laughs> So Ismail Islam comes home, how was your day? She says, this old man came by and very interesting old man. You know, I served him and he asked me how I was doing and I told him about the difficulties and the hardships we're facing. And Ismail says, did he say anything to you? Did he relay anything for me? She says, yes, the old man said that you should change the door on your gate. He's like, I'm sorry, I can't be with you anymore. <laughs> so she was the door to the gate, right? And so later on in the hadith, Ibrahim Islam goes back and he visits and this is Ismail Islam's wife again, and he goes in and this is a woman that, you know, serves him and says salam. He asks her, how are you? SubhanAllah, same situation. Nothing has changed about the house. Nothing has changed about their circumstances. Nothing has changed about their poverty. And she says, Alhamdulillah, we are doing well. You know, everything is great. All she has is good things to say about their situation. And he's pleased. And he says to her, when your husband comes home, give my salam to him and tell him he should keep the door on his gate. So Ismail Islam comes home and says, how was your day? And she says, this noble, beautiful old man came by today and I served him and then he asked about our situation. I told him, Alhamdulillah, how our situation is. And Ismail says, did he say anything to relate to me? And she said, yeah, he said, when your husband comes home, give him salam and tell him to keep the door on his knees. He says, Alhamdulillah, I get to keep my wife. That's really what this boils down to. And I tell people, Ibrahim does not like people who complain. That's not the spirit that Ibrahim Islam left for us to inherit, right? People who complain, who whine about their situation. Now, the power of this though, is that both of these women had the exact same situation, but saw life entirely different. So the Prophet ﷺ said, look at those that have less than you, not those who have more than you. And with your blessings, look at the blessings you have, not the ones that you don't have. You know it's powerful? What's the first word you say when you wake up? All praises be to Allah, alhamdulillah. Like you open your eyes as a Muslim, you are to say alhamdulillah, right when you wake up. That's how you're tuned. All praises be to Allah who woke me up, who granted me life after death and to him is our return. Like I did not even take for granted that I'm gonna open my eyes. To and the fact that I open my eyes, the very first thing that I say, Alhamdulillah. And so the whole day should be Alhamdulillah. And the Prophet said, whoever wakes up and the dunya is their greatest concern. The life of this world is their greatest concern. Allah places poverty between their eyes. They wake up and all they see is poverty for the rest of their day because the dunya is their greatest concern. Perspective is off. And the dunya will escape them anyway. So they'll chase after and it's going to escape them. And whoever wakes up and the akhirah, the hereafter is their greatest concern, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts richness, self-sufficiency, wealth, and Allah gathers for them their affairs of this dunya as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitates for them as well. The greatest blessing, that Imam al Ghazali rahimahullah says, Al-Rila bil qali. You're so pleased with so little because your little is so much. Someone is not pleased with the valley of gold. Another is pleased with a sip of water. And shukr, gratitude is what the increase is. And subhanAllah, think about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whose words in history have been documented like the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Not a single human being comes close. Can you think of a single hadith that even resembles a complaint with all that he went through alayhi salatu of the thousands and thousands and thousands of narrations? This man, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who went through all of this, where do you see complaints? All you see is gratitude and humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Contentment is one of those elusive goals that we all strive for in our lives, subhanAllah. And Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmanullah, described it, I think, beautifully, where he described contentment as the greatest door to paradise on this earth Earth and also a door to Jannah, subhanAllah. And I think that that's such an apt description because anybody who's been dissatisfied, who struggles with feelings of dissatisfaction, you know how difficult that can feel, how negative that can feel, and how it almost feels like you're looking at your life through a cloudy lens where you only see the negatives. And so the opposite of being able to experience a life filled with contentment is so incredibly joyful. And so we all strive for that, both for the dunya benefit, the worldly benefit that comes with it psychologically, but then even more the spiritual benefit that comes with it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the reward of a person being content with Allah, content with their life, content with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Jannah, right? Where we're welcomed into Jannah as a nafsul mutma'inna, the satisfied self. 
And that would not be a reward if it was beyond our control. And so how do we hone this sense of contentment? The first thing that's so important to realize is number one, that it is within our control, is that actually only 10% of our happiness is based on our life circumstances. But we all tend to attribute our happiness to what's going on in our lives. Once I get that promotion, I'm going to be happy. Once I lose those 10 pounds, once I get married, once I have children, once I, once I, once I. And then once you reach that goal, you feel exactly the same and you can feel hopeless. Like, is anything in my life ever going to be enough? And the answer to that is no, unless you make it enough. Because our happiness is not reliant on our circumstances. And we see that in the example of Ismail salam, and his two wives and their experience. They experienced the exact same circumstances, but the way they felt in those circumstances were completely different. So acknowledging to ourselves, whether I complain about something or whether I'm happy with something, it doesn't change the circumstances, but it changes how I experience the circumstance. And that's incredibly powerful. And one of the things that I find to be most helpful for me personally is to create a mindset shift where I tell myself I get to do something instead of I have to do something. So I get to drive to work. I get to clean up the mess of my children because how many people are unemployed who wish they could have a job? How many people don't have children who wish that they could have children? And so when you switch your mindset to I get to versus I have to, then suddenly even the things that are frustrating seem like they're filled with blessings. And so that's one simple thing that I think can help us to really reframe our circumstances and take control of gaining that sense of contentment, inshallah.